Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's good to have you here today in my flat, in my bedroom, where today we're going to talk a little bit about my past uh, and we're going to talk a little bit about my future as well with regards to cars, of course. So unsurprisingly, we're doing this from my bedroom because we're still in lockdown. I do plan on doing some other smaller videos in and around the car when we're in lockdown, just out in the street where the car is parked. Uh, but today I thought, you know, in my very first video, I gave you an overview of what I could potentially be doing with the car next year. Uh, so I thought what would be better, rather than going outside uh, and filming with the car, would be to do a one-on-one -on -one type video here in my room where I can go through my past cars and I can give you an idea of what I may be looking at next year when we look at getting the next car. So I hope you enjoy and uh, please like and subscribe and comment um, any of my cars in my past and any of the car choices that I have moving forward. Please feel free to comment on them. But yeah, just enjoy uh, and let me know what you think. Right, so jumping straight into it, I thought what we could do is go back on my past. So I've only been driving for about 10 years now and the very first car that I actually got was a Ford Fiesta. The 1.3 Mark V Fiesta Flight in black. It's a fairly standard Ford Fiesta flight and actually it remained in, in the family well beyond the time I let it go. So it passed to my brother after I'd moved on uh, and uh, and then my dad used it and ran it into the ground. I think by the time it eventually died, the speedo wasn't working. There was a hole the size of like a golf ball in, in the rear arches. Uh, so it was certainly uh, used and abused. But moving on from that, actually, uh, I think I lasted maybe about a year. Um, I moved straight into a Fiesta Z Tech S. The, the alternative was a Citroen Saxo, but I had to stay with Ford. I think I already loved the 1.3 flight, so I think it, a natural progression was obviously the, the Fiesta Z Tech S. And, and quite a lot of the conversation and, and, and a lot of the video, you'll notice that I'm quite easily influenced by, by my friends. So my mate Rog had one of these. And he was like, Neil, go buy it. So I was like, okay, I'll go and buy it. So I went and bought this uh, this 1.6 litre, what is it, 102 brake horsepower. So almost 40 brake horsepower more than my 1.3 flight. And I went down to <laughs> Wolverhampton for this. Anyway, great car, um, Imperial Blue. Uh, and I had little sporty mods that were that different from the standard Mark V Fiesta. And then I think I had that one again for about a year and a half. I uh, upgraded to a Ford Focus ST, the 225, which is the 2006 model, not the facelift. The facelift model, actually, my dad bought um, just before I bought the Focus ST as well, that he's had ever since, and it's, it's still very low mileage, and he looks after it really well. It's something quite jealous, actually. He's never let me he never lets me drive it, even though I've owned one, and I've owned more purple cars than that, but he actually uh, he's, uh, never let me drive it. So I'm quite, bit annoyed, quite annoyed about that. Anyway, uh, I think I've got some photos in there with the cars next to each other too. Um, that car was really good. Um, and in actual fact, I quite regret maybe the way I treated it um, with regards to cleaning. Um, and that ultimately led to rust along the, along the arches. Um, but not it, it, when I sold it, it wasn't um, showing. It was still bubbling under a little bit. Um, um, so I think by this point I was really desperately wanting a Subaru. So I've, I've grown up with Subarus the whole way through university. My friend had one and his mate had one um, and I just love the two litre engine and the burble noise that Subarus make and I just had to like get my hands on one. So you know I've been working a couple of years up in Aberdeen and uh, a good one came up for sale this time down in Birmingham I think. Birmingham. Uh, uh, it came up uh, and uh, this was a it was a trade deal so I took the focus down with me and I had a, a sort of price in principle but again I was in a headlock when it came to actually selling it um, so when I went down the road uh, the woman who was like the head salesman of the they knew I wanted the car and there was like she probably haggled another like 500 quid off me like night and day like I'll, I'll, I will forever love that ST but this, this, this is where the Subaru journey for me started um, so it was a, a 55 plate blob eye, 2 litre, the type UK uh, variant, uh, and it was in blue um, and it had gold wheels, so quite a quintessential Subaru. Um, it was fantastic to drive. It came with a few other bells and whistles, so it was the PPP variant, so it came with, I think, 
um, an upgraded Pro Drive exhaust. It came with some additional um, uh, air intake uh, hoses. It was, uh, I think it was around about 320 brakes. So I can't recall if that was an upgrade to the the standard UK version. But the, the Pro Drive pack came with a few other bells and whistles that really made it something special. Yeah, and I just uh, like I love that car. I mean, I spent quite a lot of money keeping it up to to spec. There's um. There's a local Subaru builder up in Aberdeen called uh, Brian Downey and he's just like a god when it comes to, to looking after Subarus and he was my go-to guy with any work that needed done. I tended not to do too much myself um, and I'll probably go into that in a little bit more detail in other videos because being in a flat is one of the most painful things ever, having to park out in the street as well. Yeah, so I had that Subaru and um, I think, I don't know, I don't know what, what made me choose to sell it. Um, I think I had a run of you know like three punctures in like one month and then and then I was sitting in traffic one day but coming back from work and it was over a, a rough surface and I had to go over the same bump like every single day on the way back from work and it was just grinding on me a bit and I think I just took this snap decision that I wanted to save a little bit more money and um, so I elected to buy this I, I sold it and I lost money on it but it was the most painful thing ever because I, I don't know if this happened to any of you guys but I bought the car sorry I sold the car just when I, you know, I thought the market was good, but it wasn't, and it took me a couple of months to sell, and I had to drop the price a couple of times to let you know, to make it sort of say a more a more attractive offer for people to buy it, and then literally like a month later, the price shot up again. But anyway, I sold that and bought this um, one point six liter diesel Fiesta. So my third Fiesta. I don't know why I went back, but this was like the Mark Seven. And about this point, like I say, I mentioned uh, I met my fiance and we would go out to drives quite a lot, and I just felt really crap driving a Fiesta. I remember when we were down in, in Edinburgh, there was just this this person driving so erratically. I was so sure they were on they were drinking, and and there was a car right up my ass, and this uh, person in front was acting erratically. I just wanted to get out, overtake, and go. And I think at that point, I realised that it was time to to move on to something else. So, I mean, at that point, that's when I started looking at Subarus again. I mean, I was always looking at them. Um, but um, by this point, I'd finished the work on my teeth and we weren't saving too much. And things were going well at work. So I thought, you know, why not just jump back in the Subaru? Um, <laughs> and like I said earlier on, I'm, I'm quite easily influenced by my friends. And uh, Rog phoned me up one day and he was like, Neil, there's a Type 20. Uh, Subaru uh, for sale just around the corner so no Wolverhampton no Birmingham this was just around the corner you should go and have a little look at it so I, I popped around to this guy's uh, the, um, so actually to his place of work and this car was just like perfect perfect for me so I'd been considering a JDM version so the Japanese domestic market variant of the the same car that I had before so the type UK so I'd been looking at a few JDM models and the multiple colours and I was really keen to get my hands on one because they come with a few other um, specs that the, the UK ver version done, uh, doesn't and um, so I was very keen to get my hands on one and this one came up um, around the corner I went to see it and I fell in love with it I didn't even I think I test drove it just around the block and I was like sold car was insane so the Japanese model comes with quite a lot more than the standard UK version. I've got a list here actually on my laptop so I won't spraff any crap to you. So the JDM retains a two litre. So in, um, you'll find it a little bit later. Um, from 2006 onwards, the, in the UK market, they switched from the two litre to the two and a half litre and it's quite significantly less strong. Um, but the Japanese retained the two litre. Um, so it came with a two litre. Um, it came with a twin scroll turbo. So you lost the burble a little bit. Came with the different crank. It came with the quick rack, um, slightly larger intercooler, um, more aggressive inlet cams, uh, equal length headers, uh, folding wing mirrors, and 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 the removal of the, the windscreen wiper, like just like little things like that. Uh, and then it has um, a different gearbox with the uh, fifth and sixth gear slightly shorter. And it has a few other goodies on top. Uh, this list I've only gone through half, but there's even more. So. Litchfield imported it brand new and then they changed it to what they call as a, a type 20 and apparently they made between 16 and 20 of them so in addition to what is essentially the JDM over the type UK they changed it to this the exhaust system to a 3 inch Miltec they gave the ECU a remap the 3 port boost solenoid 
came down panel filter and they put the AST coilover suspension on. They put what they call a Type 20 handling pack, um, which came with a few other handling goodies. They fitted the STI front lip spoiler that you'll see on quite a few quite a few of the Subarus that are rolling around. Uh, and then you got stuff like Type 20 floor mats, Type 20 uh, badges, uh, and then um, this particular car actually had um, quite rare JDM Pro Drive forged alloys on them as well. So it had a lot of goodies. Um, it was an, it was a, it was a good it was a good deal. I, I have to say I was in oh, thinking about it just makes me emotional. Like honestly, that car was just like was was the, one of the best cars I ever had. Um, you know when you compare it to the to the BMW that I've got now, obviously there's stuff that the Subaru had that this the BMW uh, doesn't, and and vice versa. But nothing compares like to taking that the a B road blaster like that round uh, around the the Cairn Gorns or or around the roads around Aberdeen. It was just it was just top notch. Like I I can't I couldn't fault it. So I mean this takes us up to about two years ago now. So quite a lot of cars in a lot of t in, a, in quite a short space of time. But what happened was um, I, I'd, I'd had to make a decision. So I think about that time I was ready to propose to Lois and. Um, so that's exactly what I did. I sold the Type 20 again. I sold it and the, nobody was buying. And then three months later, everyone was buying and the price went up. So after I, I bought the ring and, I, and and all that, I decided that I'd elected to buy a new car. So, you know, PCP deals at the time were fantastic. Um, and some great cars you can get out there for the money. Um, and hence the reason I bought the BMW. So, you know, I had a little bit of change left over from and from the ring but not that much so I put a small deposit down I got a great deal on the BMW M140 you know the, the the plan was that I wouldn't be involved in any owner clubs which I was with the Subaru and the plan was that I wouldn't want to modify it it would just be a car that you know I drove it would, but it was powerful and it was capable and it would just be a car to be driven to work and it'd be comfortable and all this sort of stuff um, but <laughs> obviously I don't know myself as well as maybe my friends do and maybe Lois does because almost instantly I was like I wanted to modify it but you can't because it's on PCP or if you do and you're found out you get charged and all this sort of stuff and and we'll go into you know in, in future videos into the reasons why I'm not particularly in love with M140 as I maybe hoped I would be but um, it is a very good car like, like I say it's it is fantastic to drive you know I've never had a rear-wheel drive car um, so it's fun, like when you want it to be fun, but there's something missing from it. Like all of my cars in the past, like served a purpose, but the Subarus and the and the Fiesta ZTEC S and the Focus ST had that, you know, something else above it that made it a little bit more special. Um, whereas this the BMW seems like I've just bought it, you know, because I wanted something capable. And um, I think it's out of all of the cars, it's maybe the one I regret most. So, I mean, that is my, the history, I thought this would maybe take 10 seconds, but it's more like taking 10 minutes. Um, that is the history of the cars I've bought up until now. So guys, you've had my past and you've had a little bit of my present with regards to the BMW. Uh, but that's something we're going to cover in the videos to come. So as it stands at the moment, um, myself and Lois are saving for a wedding. So the wedding is in October, fingers crossed, with all this COVID stuff. Um, but what follows is a quite an intense period of saving um, for a house because like I said earlier on we're living in a flat it's not ideal uh, there are many issues living in a flat cleaning the car parking the car oh there's loads of crap that I don't like about it um, but you know we have eyes on the future and, and the plan is to next year get ourselves a detached house with a garage so that I can really kick off not so that I can, that's not the only reason. Obviously, we're going to move house for our future, but at the same time, I want a garage. I want to be able to do stuff with cars. I want to be able to film more. I want to be able to bring you along for the journey, which is essentially leading up to me selling the BMW and then moving on. Yeah, so what I thought I might do actually for you all is to actually go through some of the cars that I've got my eye on. Um, some of the models um, and then actually some of the cars that are available in the market right now that I can show you that I would potentially be looking at 
as the next car. Yeah, so there's two potential um, avenues I could take. So I could jump back in to a, a new car or a used car again on PCP and run the risk, you know, that I can't do much in the way of modifications. So, you know, the big stuff like remap. Um, I'm, I'm very conscious I'm not one of, the, one of those people that does like to do big changes to cars on PCP because I've heard a few stories of people being caught out and having to either pay the, the final balloon payment straight away or, or having to hand the car back. It's just, there's a few horror stories out there, so mm, I'm not too sure. So there are a couple of cars in the list that I'll show you that are that, are, that can be purchased um, but can only be purchased on PCP, whether that be brand new or whether it be used. So with that in mind, um, let's get started and I'll show you my list of cars that I want. So first car is the F80 BMW M3. Uh, this for me is just like the ultimate uh, of BMWs. I've always wanted an M3 just from when I was younger. I mean, it's part of the reason I went for the M140 just you know, it was like a, you know, a, a dumbed down cheaper version you know, of an M car. It's not technically an M car, the M140, it's just, they call it an M light. But the M3 is just something that I've always just wanted. It's an itch I've wanted to scratch. Um, and I'm actually in the, the M Owners Club, in the Scottish M Owners Club for the M140. And there's so many, so many of the guys in the club have M3s and they swear by them. Whether it's the E90, the V8 before this, this, uh, this current generation though just jumps out at me. I love, I love the way it looks, the F80. Um, I've never driven one. But I've sat in one and obviously a few of my mates have them uh, and they are lovely and it's something I certainly need to test drive. I don't know whether I'll go for it. Um, the prices may drop slightly with the introduction of the new M3. They expect one in the next you know, one to two years. I'm not sure how that's looking with regards to the virus. Um, but um, certainly there's a hope perhaps that the M3, the current generation, the F80, will then drop in price. So what I'll do is I'll, is I'll show you uh, right now an example of one. So what you have here is, is, the, is the M3 in Yas Marina Blue. Uh, I'm looking at all of these cars on piston heads, but other, uh, other companies exist for the sale, the sale of cars. Um, but I've uh, elected to use piston heads on this occasion. So it's just a step up, you know, from the M140, as you can see, you know, it, it kind of ticks all the needs that I would require. It's what you would essentially call the fast family car. Um, so as me and Lois look to the future, it's going to tick all those boxes. Um, it's fast, it's comfortable, uh, it's fun when you want it to be. Uh, and then of course, um, it has, you know, it has a big boot. You know, it has a big enough um, fuel tank. You know, it's, it's sort of the quintessential fast family car. Um, something that I just, Thing I'll at least have to test drive or, or have a shot in and if I had this white interior then, then then even better. So moving very smoothly on from the, the first car we're looking at car number two and this is in there just maybe for kicks. I don't think it's ever going to work uh, but I mean in the previous uh, for the previous car we talked about um, the fact that the new M3 is due soon so you know if that does come out will the prices drop? I don't know. Anyway so after the release of the standard M3, the F80 variant, the one that I love dearly and, and was the previous car that we mentioned, they released the M3 competition pack, which came with a few other features on top of the standard one. And then they did the limited run of the M3 CS, which is just, oh, it's just, it's just the ultimate. And I've never seen, in my view, a better um, uh, BMW. I just, you know, I'm even including all the, all of the, the past greats. I think the the M3 CS just does something for me. I, I just can't explain it. I get the same sort of feeling as I had with the Subaru just when I see one I'm like oh, I just want one. So I mean it came with a few other like added you know benefits or you know added um, performance from the standard M3 competition pack. So it came with I think an extra 10% and um, try to look at my notes at the same time guys but and it came with certainly came with a lot more carbon fibre uh, I think the lightened roof, lightened bonnet, it has a staggered wheel size um, between the front and back. It has specific tires. I think it runs the Cup 2s. Um, and it just, you know, and it, 
has so much Alcantara and it has like, oh, just, ah, oh, I, 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 I'm sorry, I'm having a bit of a crisis. But the, the M3 CS is just, it's just spot on for, you know, what I want in life. Like people have those, you know, the goals, you know, like I want, I want, a, you know, for me it'd be an, an R34 GTR, like, you know, like uh, the ultimate and, 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 and Ferraris and Porsches and, and, you know, an N11 Turbo S's and Lamborghinis and just, you know, all the fantastic cars that people dream about having. I got that feeling when I saw the CS, um, especially in the colours that it come with. So it comes in, it comes in um, San Marino Blue, which I've seen in the flesh on my, my mate's M3. But um, they also did this Lime Rock Grey, which is quite similar to Nardo, but in my opinion, a lot nicer. Um, and I've got a version of it up here. Um, and if you, if you just look at them, it just I just think they look so much cooler. But as you can see from the uh, from the the piston head advert, they're so expensive. Like it's a you know they've stripped away out and it's t it's typical of supercars. You know what I mean? Or not supercars, but you know the the, the fancy ones. More carbon fiber, lighter weight, adds like twenty grand. You know, I just think. I mean, when I look at the photos here of them, I'm just like, I just want one. I want one bad. And my mates on the owners club know that, so they keep spamming me with ones they've seen or ones that are available. Um, and you know, I love the lime rock grey, and the, but the more I see the San Marino blue one with like the, with the dark grey alloys, I'm just like, oh, I think I want one. So anyway, it's on there because if they can make it work, if if I can make that work financially, you know, in a year's time, if I have to save an extra six, you know, six months worth of, you know, for a deposit or, or just to have to do, if I can make it work, I'll talk to, I've got mate who works with BMW, if I can make it work, I would love to bring that to the channel and just like, I wouldn't need to, you know, we could do so much that it doesn't need modifications, it just needs like to be driven around Scotland, it just needs to be looked at, it's just a, a lovely car, can you tell I like it? Yeah. Okay, so reeling myself in slightly from that crisis, uh, looking at the M3 CS. Um, some of you may have guessed this, but I will absolutely, certainly, definitely be looking at uh, another uh, Subaru Impreza. Um, can't get away from them. And this falls into the second category of having a car, not on PCP, that I would own and I'd be really able to build up a really good project for you guys, for the channel, and then also just build it to how I want it. So I definitely want to be looking at Subarus. So yeah, for me, it's going to be almost going to be a question of M3, an M3 CS if I can get it, or a Subaru. PCP or project, um, but the Subaru is something a little bit dear to my heart, obviously, and I can certainly have the Impreza for a year or so and then move them to a CS. Don't know. But this time it's going to be something different. Last time I had, so the first time I had the Type UK blob eye, then I had a blob eye that was the JDM Type 20 from Litchfield. So this time I want it to be a Hawkeye. So in 2006 they brought out the Hawkeye, which was the, 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 the Hawkeye, basically the blob. It, the, the headlights look a big blob and the hawk looks like a hawk simply um it came it was a little bit it was just a facelift in my opinion there's not much with regards to differences between the chassis and the setup um but the hawkeye I, I think looks very mean especially in black um but it's hawkeye is something i've just an itch i've got a scratch i think it's, it's something that i really want to look into um, but this time it's got to be special. So instead of just the standard JDM market, so Japanese domestic market, Impreza STI, it's definitely going to have to be a Spec C or a forged RB320, which was the, the black UK performance variant um, that they made in, in, in honour of Richard Burns. And I put photos in both. Um, but the JDM, the Spec C, it comes with, the performance is pretty much the same as the as the standard JDM one. It has less soundproofing, it's lighter, it has thinner glass, it's lowered a little bit more. It comes with a different exhaust, I believe, a slightly different suspension setup too. So it's a little bit more track focused. There's just something about it and, and this particular one that I'm showing on screen right now um, is, 
isn't actually a Japanese market um, variant, but it was a build done by a, a guy on the on the forums a few years back, and they called it the Terminator. And I just I saw it then, and every single time I look to get a new car, I think of this, and I'm just like, it's just something pretty cool. I just love to build the project around it, like so that it's kind of like the conundrum of this whole video, and 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 I appreciate your comments. Um, it's this whole the PCP versus the project and building that Impreza, you know, and a Japanese version of the Terminator and the whole black blacked out stealth look would just be incredible. But it's a completely different kettle of fish to the to the BMW, but it's this whole you know, I can build a project around it and I can take you guys along with it. There's so much more in terms of content and, and, and the YouTube sense that, that I can do with the Subaru. And plus, like, it's just like I keep coming back to them. It's just one of those things. Like, I'm, I'm obviously going to have to test drive, you know, both the BMW and this and a few others of, that I've got in this lineup. Ah, you can see the turmoil in my head right now. So, there was three cars in my shortlist plus... A fourth. While I was looking, I spotted an R33 GTR, and they are in the mid 20s for a decent version. A lot of them have higher mileage, but it is an option because, like I've mentioned earlier, like an R34 is just the is, is Godzilla is just the is just the absolute goal. I mean, the M3 CS will, you know, I'd be content to live. You know, and say that I've I managed to get the car in my dreams, but like, there's just that there's that you know that car that one car probably sitting in the back of mind that you never owned. Like if I ever got into one of them, insane. So the R thirty threes are are still okay price wise. Some of them are creeping up. Could I get into one? Could I do a project around that? Um, and then so others, yeah. So there was that list, and then a few others recently. While I started building this video up and some ideas about how I was going to film it and what I was going to look at. I started to like pull together this other short list and it contains just three cars, but I'd really like to know what you guys have as an opinion to these three cars. In, in Evo 8 or an Evo 9. <laughs> I probably shouldn't be saying that as a, as a diehard fan of a Subaru, but it's one of those things I think the prices are a little bit lower for you know for the special ones of um the pretzels you know you can get a really good evo 9 mr for a decent price and again you could build the project around it i'll be test driving one but whether or not i'll be purchasing one is another is another thing entirely second to last so we spoke about the m3 sort of like fills this box of this sort of fast family car and the RS4 is something that I've been considering as well. So my mate had the the most recent generation S4, and he, you know it had it came came with all the bells and whistles. It was just like a lovely, lovely car. Shout out to Dan. The Audis have caught my attention, so I'd like to jump in. I used you know 2013, 2014 RS4 Avant because that fills that again. That fills that fast family car you know there's certainly things we could do from a project perspective you know maintenance cleaning you know uh, an upgrade to the exhaust an upgrade perhaps to the mapping on the gearbox um, or an upgrade to, to the, the map itself or power there's a lot you can do with that you know that you can't do on the m3 because of the pcp thing and at the same time you know you know milos can use it as a daily it's like one of those you know I wasn't thinking about it before, but like I say, when I started reviewing cars for this video, I started looking at almost everything on the website. It's like, you know, if I was looking at this brand, what, you know, this com car company, what would I look at? And I'm like, RS4 Avant? Hey, that's quite cheap for this year, 2014 model. But, you know, I could see myself in that. So, there's the Audi. And then the third, again, the third of the, the German trio, I suppose, is the Mercedes C63 AMG. And I've put this one in last because a mate of mine, Ian, had one and ever since I heard the V8 in his, I've just wanted one. <laughs> so of course the, the M3 doesn't come doesn't come with the V8 after the E90, the F8 didn't, didn't adopt that, that particular engine. My mate did quite a few things to it and it got me thinking about it and I'm 
you know, it's, it's, it, at the moment it's outside the budget, so it's in there as like a last, as a last sort of entry. Um, but it's certainly something I would consider if the prices dropped over the next year or so. Um, I know what he would say if I, um, if I asked him what he thought. Uh, he would just tell me to bloody buy it. Uh, so, yeah, so I mean, there's the Mercedes C63 AMG and I think at the very least what I'll do is, is, I'll, is I'll, you know, I'll test drive them. <laughs> and then that becomes a really difficult decision because if you look at all through this list and, and if you look at all my past cars, the one thing that I, that I had in common from all of my past cars is I didn't test drive anything else before I bought. And this time round, I'm talking about, you know, M3 or M3CS, and I'm talking about a Subaru Impreza JDM, a Spec C. You know, I'll be hopping in a C63 AMG just for a test drive. I'll be looking at the Evos for a test drive. I'll be hopping in my mate's Porsche, because he'll no doubt want me to have a test drive of that for his Cayman R. And then you've got like the RS4 Avant there as, as, as well. You know, it's just, a, there's so much to think about. I don't know where my head's at, but right now it's M3, M3 CS, if the prices come down. And the, the Subaru is that, it's that one or the other, what can we do? So yeah, that concludes this video. I know a little bit different to what my previous videos were. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. Please like and subscribe and, and and comment below, like, what do you guys think? Do you think, do you think the Evo 9 over the Subaru is, is an age-old uh, question that everybody's asked everybody in the car industry, what would you rather have? And then, you know, what do you think about the M3? Do you think, you know, think the RS4 is a better fit? Do you think the C63 AMG's got a better engine? Like, let me know what you think. Tell me what you think I should buy. It's going to be a long year thinking about what's going to be next, but obviously I've got some great things coming up to fill that time in as well. So thank you very much. See you later.